Okay, folks. Um, I started this, and then I had I put my video on pause while I did the stitching on it. You can see where I did the stitching. Um, and then I thought I would just unpause it and continue, but uh, the whole thing's lost. It's gone, gone with the wind. And so, but anyhow, what I'm doing is I'm working on a on a soul vessel. These are called so many different things. People people call these many many different things. Um, you can call them a a vessel or a stitch basket or anything. Um, and mine is this one in any way is I put it over a a glass. And so because I want mine to be a little more sturdy and um, to hold pens and pencils and stuff like that and not fall over. And so, but although you could make them heavy enough so you can do that. So what I did was I measured out a piece of burlap. And I, um, this, I, was, uh, I did a video similar to this some while back, but I couldn't even find it. But um, a young lady that watches my videos from, from um, South Florida, from the Miami area, she, her name is Cheryl. She sent me an email, and she said that she's watched um, different people make these. And she wondered if I would do a video and make a soul vessel or a soul a vessel, a soul vessel, a vessel. It's called a stitch basket, a stitch vessel. There's many names for it. And and then she sent me a few pictures. And then I went and looked on on Pinterest and oh my gosh, they, there's so many different different ones, and they call them different things. So, but they're all basically. Uh, a vessel, a, something to put your something in. I mean, your, your pencils, pens, your colored pencils, different things that you can put it in. So I'm this one because I always use something as a form to cover mine. This is a little hanging cup that I have. Bought that over to the Hobby Lobby. It was two ninety nine, but I bought it on a 90% off sale a long time ago. And it's, I love galvanized steel. I just think it's adorbs. And so, but this is what I do. Once I get the whole thing, I just laid out just scraps of fabric. Just scraps of fabric, very eclectic, nothing matching. You can do matching if you want, of course, but um, I don't go for matching. I go to I go for um, nothing matching. I just, you know, I like eclectic. I like colorful. I like um, I like things that you have to look at a while to see the whole thing. If you do it too matchy for me, it's like you look at it for a minute and you don't see the whole thing. Okay, so now what I do to make sure it's going to fit, I, um, I wrap. Now I'll wrap this around my, my piece whatever I'm co covering. Now, and I made this one, it's it's much too long, but that's okay. I'm going to, um, let's see, which side do I want? Okay, I'll let it be like this. <coughs> now, it's, 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 um, okay, I have it completely covered. And I'm just going to wrap it and overlap it. I could cut that if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to leave that on there. And then I'm going to take my straight pins and I'm going to um, pin that right where it's going to fit. I want to see. I'm going to just pin that just like it's going to fit onto this um, onto this, whatever you put it on. One thing I really like to use is like a one pint wide mouth um, mason jar. Those make really nice, um, really nice uh, base if you're going to make one with, if you want, you know, 
And a lot of people, they make the inside just as beautiful as the outside. And so, and I'm going to just leave mine. I, I really like my, um, I like this because it can hang. I can use it for pencils and pens and paintbrushes and such. And it can hang on the side of something. Okay, so now I have that pinned. I have it pinned right where it's going to fit. And um, so now what I'll do is I'm going to stitch along there. I'm going to put in some more stitching. And where did I put my needle? There's my needle. And um, I'm going to stitch right along, along the, um, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stitch. Um, just to stitch... I was going to try and sew it with the thread. you got to put your thread in the needle. That's kind of important. You can't poke your thread through the fabric without a needle. Oh, I swear my senility is getting like good grief. I'm getting a little concerned. Um, yeah, okay, so I'm going to... I have doubled my thread throughout all of the boral stitching on here just so that it'll, because it's lightweight, I want it to show. And see, you can see how it, the stitching shows. I like for the stitching to show. So now I'm going to just start. And, and I don't hide my knots. I, I haven't hidden my knots on here. My knots are all showing every place where I've re- attached more thread and stuff, uh, the knot shows. I want my knots to show. And all of my pieces are raw edge. I love raw edge art. Raw edge fabric textile art things. I love the raw edge. And um, like this, after it's held for a while, after it's you use it for a while and you've touched it, like these edges, especially of this this um, denim that's on there, that'll um, that'll fray really nicely. And it gets to looking very oldish. Now this, this one that I did a while back, I sewed this one on the sewing machine. Except for where I put it together. I cut it straight. And, because um, this was a, this is a straight. Okay, Papa. This is a straight container. It's straight up and down. So that when I didn't have it closed up, it didn't um, turn. I mean, it didn't have to make like a cone shaped. This one's uh, coney shaped. Okay, where am I at here? Okay. So I am... There's where a little piece of my burlap is hanging out. I think that's pretty awesome. I love that. I love that. I just love that raggedy looking. I love primitive looking. I'm not saying everything primitive is raggedy schnaggedy, but I just love it. I love it. So now I'm just going to, again, I'm just doing the running stitch borrow stitch and I poked myself with my needle. Hang on. I got um, I keep band-aids on the ready. I gotta get a band-aid on there real quick before I bleed to death. I don't want to bleed to death. These are my pretty band-aids. These are my unicorn band-aids were sent to me by my friend um, Ray, when I was having my nose surgery, oh, good grief, I ruined that one. Okay, hang on, let me get another band aid. Okay, let's dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it. Those are bigger ones. Okay, this one will work that off on my dress. you got to excuse me. I'm just kind of a weird one. 
Now this is where I should be pausing this video. Okay. And put that right there. It doesn't look like it's really bad, but I cover up my little boo-boos just because I got these pretty band-aids. Okay, now. Now, where were we at here? Okay, see if I can do the rest of this without poking myself again. You got to be careful with needles. They're sharp. Just the heads up so you understand. Okay. There, some of my burlap is showing right there, too. I like that. I like that a lot. Now, there's a lot of other things you can add to these. As In fact, while I was stitching, I was thinking, well, it would be pretty neat if I, um, if I had beads and I put a bead in every stitch. Every time I went in and out, put a bead. Wouldn't that be pretty? I think that would be gorgeous. Gorgeous. I might try that one day. Have it very um, bohemian looking. Okay, I'm going to now just go over this way a little bit because some of this at the top is is going to get cut. Is it going to get cut? Hmm, let me think. It may not have to be cut. Okay, let's see. Now I want to go back down here and catch that inside a little bit. And, and you see how much thought I'm putting into each stitch? Nope, there's no thought. Well, I can take those pins off of there now. The stitching is holding it. Okay. So some of my stitches are long, some are short, some are medium, but they're stitches nonetheless. So when you do something like this, it's whatever you end up with, that's what you end up with. Okay, I do not think, I just was thinking, but I do not think I'm going to um, cut any off of the top. I think what I'm going to do is just fold it in. Okay, now, put a little knot there, because I went all the way around that. Everywhere where it overlapped here, that's why I went stitched up here and then across and then back down where it overlapped in the inside. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to put my put, put this back on my cup here. See, and it'll pull up and it'll be just exactly the size you want it to be. Now, see this part here? See there, it overlaps just a little bit here. So I, what I'm going to do is, I am going to I could have um, maybe made it a little bit taller here so it would, the whole thing would overlap a little bit. So what I'm going to do here now is right there where it was poking upwards, I'm going to just a little bit I'm going to um, just turn it under. Right now I'm wondering Am I going to make this too tight where it's not going to go on my... I poke myself again. I don't think so. I think it'll be okay. I'll make it be okay. There's a piece of the burlap poking through. That looks cool. 
Okay, I think, yeah. Now, it's, it's going to be rustic, very rustic. Okay, I'm going to get some more thread on my needle here. And um, now see, I have seen where some people will start with, with felt underneath, like a, like a stiff felt. And then that felt will almost make it like freestanding where you don't need to have a um, base like a jar or a glass or a tin can. But I mean, a tin can would be awesome. Coffee can. Do they make coffee cans anymore? I think they do. Most of them are them plastic things. But doing this on a coffee can would be awesome. Okay, so I'm going to now, right there where I got that folded under, I'm going to, again, just a little bit of a borrow set. You know what? Or I could... Instead of borrow stitching it, I could just whip stitch. Doesn't matter. I think whip stitching it would be fine. And so I'll just whip stitch that around. You know, I'm sure glad that I'm not a perfectionist because I would never get anything done if I was a perfectionist. Because I can't hardly, I'm doing a diamond painting right now. Diamond dots. Oh, that's rough on this woman. I'm only doing it because it was in my friend Carol's sale. She was selling it. But when I saw the image, I said, oh my gosh, that's Jeffrey's dog. And I said, I got to have that. And I'm going to do it for Jeffrey for his, for hopefully I'll have it done by Christmas and have it framed for him so he'll have his because he's got a little um shih tzu a little white shih tzu so cute and that's what this dog is that i'm doing the diamond but oh my gosh it's so tedious you know and i'm just not into tedious things and so i'm into do things however it works and be happy don't worry be happy Okay, let's see how this is going to work now. I'm doing it like a whip stitch around the top, but but it's um, big old stitches I'm putting in there. I'm not doing anything trying to hide my stitches. I don't I don't hide my stitches. I, mean, I have to put them stitches in there when people see that I just worked hard. Worked hard at building this thing. Oh. Okay. I think I about went around as far as I need to. Part of it isn't going to be... Part of it is not going to be... Let me see before I cut that thread off. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to pull that on. See what happens. Yeah, that's what I want. So that folded under part is going to be where the hook is. And this part that sticks up a little bit. Let me see, I can trim just a little bit there. Just that tiniest bit. And let that rest of it just stick right up. Now, for the bottom. As you can see on the bottom here, I used a piece of felt. And as you can see how that is stitched on there, I very neatly, uh -huh, I don't do anything very neatly, but I got that stitched on there. So what we need to do then, let me see if I can put this on here. Okay, I can put this around, 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 around like this. See that? I will just turn all them under, but I need a piece. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to measure just sort of, I'm going to sort of measure. I only sort of do everything. I don't do anything perfectiony. I don't do anything perfectiony. 
So now I'm, so I'm going to sort of cut me a round something another right here. A round something another. I gotta get me a, a writing you stencil. So here's another one of my hangy doohickeys. I got it. Oh, even my even my feather duster is in there. But you thought that was a rat, right? Oh, move you down something there. And then I'm gonna get something here that I can draw my circle. I let, and these just hang on my rack. So they just hang there on that rack. This is going to be the prettiest one. Okay, so now I'm going to I'm going to draw a circle here. Is that showing? Not really. Maybe if I should draw it at the bottom. Mm hmm Okay, there we go. Now, now I'm going to cut, not on the circle, but around the circle. I'm going to go about, oh, three-eighths of an inch around the outside of that circle or so. And, of course, that doesn't have to be perfect either. You just can't make it smaller than the circle. But by drawing it, you got kind of an idea. So there, see? Now I have my circle and my scraps. And now let me put this back on here. Okay, put that back on there. Oh, wait a minute. I gotta take my I didn't take my needle off of there. I didn't take my needle off of there. Jeez, but crease. One, two, three. Just wrap that for a little knot. And Now I'm going to, I think this time I'm just going to use a single thread. And now I'm going to put it on the can, on the thingy jig, thingamajig, on the thingamajig. Pull it. See, it's nice and tight. It's nice and tight. it up here so my handle hangs down here and then I'm going to just fold these over let's see I you know what I should do I'm going to kind of I don't really want to cut the threads so I'm just going to fold it over I don't want to cut the threads so I am going to just fold the whole thing over like this I could cut it off if I would want to but I don't want to that'd be some more work so now I'm going to just put this um, piece of denim right there at the bottom, and I'm going to pin it, pin it on to sort of hold it there, kind of, sort of. I Everything I do is kind of, sort of. I don't do anything perfect. I don't have any of that OCD stuff in my life. Yeah, old crappy stuff, whatever. Um, so there, see how that is now? Now what I'm going to do, that, now even if you do not want to have it, if you do not want your vessel to be a cover for something already, you can, you still can use a jar or something as a, um, as a, like a mold, like a mold. I, I think one thing I want to do, you ever did any wet felting? One thing would be fun to do is to use a jar as a mold and do wet felting and, and, and um, make a make a cover, make a, a vessel out of felt by using wet felting. And you could do it around a jar like this. I don't do a lot of felting. I do do felting, but not a whole lot. And I like working with felt, mostly needle felting.
but wet felting is pretty awesome too. It's time more time consuming, I think, the wet felting is. But boy, you don't like the Stetson people with their felted hats, felt Stetson hats that cost you a million dollars and an arm and a leg. Yeah, they do that wet felting on them hats. I'd love to see a documentary or a video showing the Stetson factory making them hats. That's a lot of work. That's why there's so much money. So anyway, now I'm getting this stitched all the way around to just to hold the bottom on. To give it a rug. A rug to sit in and my needle came out of my thread. Or actually my thread came out of my needle. And so I'm getting that back on there. Right there. Hmm. And I don't want anybody to think that I'm teaching this because I'm not, like I've said before, I'm not a teacher, not by a long shot am I a teacher. I was a teacher once for kindergarten and preschool, and you teach the ABCs and the one, two, threes, you know, and there's a right and a wrong to that. But um, when it comes to teaching any kind of art, mm -mm, there's no right and wrong. So there is no way that I would call myself a teacher. I just show you what I do. I just show you what I do to keep myself out of trouble. And I know I want to stay out of trouble. I stuff that in there. And so this is just how I do something. And I like to look at Pinterest, and then I see pictures. And instead of going and looking for the directions, I just take the picture and I say, "Oh, I think I can do that," and I do the best I can. And so, um, so yeah, I'm getting this. I'm almost around. I'm almost around, and I'll have the bottom on. And that is basically what you have. Then, once you're done with this part of it, you basically have it, have it completed except for whatever embellishments you want to put on. You might not want any more embellishments. You might want it just like this and um, and not have embellishments on it. But um, with this one here, I was thinking, yeah, we're still going around here. I was thinking, yeah, sometimes I shouldn't be allowed to think because you never know. What, Papa? I was just laughing at what you said. Oh. You shut the doors already? Well, I'm fixing to go to the rear room at 7.30. Well, you going to the rear room doesn't mean you shut the doors. All right, I'll open them up. I told you I'm claustrophobic. I like them open until I go to sleep. Then I will shut the doors. I got the kitty cat inside the gate. Did you really? Yeah. Whew. Did you pick her up? Yeah. Did she fuss with you? Nope. Oh, wow. Hmm. Oh, we have a little bit. Is she spending the night? Okay. Okay, so here now. Now. See there? I have, now that's completely covered. It's completely covered and very raggedy. So now, and, and I got it exactly the right size that it'll fit on there. It would hold up on its own too. You could, it, it can hold up on its own. So you can see underneath there where I've got all that turn under and stuff. But I I'm going to be adding more to it. In fact, I have this pocket. Well, it's sort of a pocket. And I was thinking, I don't, I'm not sure yet, but I was almost thinking that maybe, well, these here scissors ain't worth right cutting fabric because I've been cutting so much paper with them. 
Okay, let's see. I just want that. Wait a minute. Let me see if I have my better. Don't shut that yet, please. Thank you, darling. I don't mean to be cranky, but I know you like to get all things shut. Do what? Oh no, a little bit stuck. Inside the, inside the okay. But not inside the pants. Yeah. Because that might change. Okay, let me see. I'm going to cut this. Mm. Yeah, don't worry about a little bit. A little bit's be fine. Okay. So. Okay, let me see. I like these little pieces off of a pair of denim blue jeans. I mean, they are made out of a bunch of embellishments. They just take a bunch of embellishments, put them together, and call it blue jeans. And people wear them for a while, and then I get a hold of them and tear them apart. But look at that little pocket now. Now, that might be a little big for, yeah, that's a little bit big. I might have to press that. And I might want that pocket to be on here. Let's see. Where would I put it? I really don't want to cover up anything. But see, like that little pocket right there? Wouldn't that be cute? I think it would. And if I just borrow stitch it around the outside like that, I think that would be awesome. And then I have another idea is I have this burlap ruffle. And maybe I would, oh, I don't need those pins under there no more, do I? Take them off of there. I have this burlap ruffle. And that would be the uh, around the bottom. I'm thinking, where's my, oh. well, I've already been a half an hour on this, but this kind of gives you a little bit of an idea is to start off with your, your um, stitch basket that you can stitch a basket to go on any kind of a, any kind of like a glass. This is actually a flower vase. And um, that's what this one fits on. And see, on this one, I put pom-pom trim at the top. Oh, where my other ones are? That's weird. Hmm. I put some doilies on here on the outside, a doily there. Here, I just put some prima flowers. There's another doily I put there. And... Then the the little pom pom trim at the top, and and I like it. I just think it's just beautiful. I've got some leaves on there, and so this one is going to get doctored up too. And um, but I do believe that I may end up putting this trim. Maybe I'd put it at the top. I might put it on. You know, I might do that. I might put it at the top. I could hot glue it on there, or um, which would be easier if I hot glued that than stitching. But that's kind of pretty to do at the top, see? So I might do that. I'm not sure. I'm going to look at it for a day or two or nine 
and um, then decide what I'm going to do. But I got some things. I I got this in the mail today. I actually ordered from Michaels to get this stuff. But I want to make. I've got four foam four molds. I had some different kind of air dry clay, but then Jeffrey had this kind because he was making some. It's an awful heavy bag, but um. So I ordered this sculpty air dry clay, which I can make my faces. It's two pounds. That's heavy. But um, make my faces for my dolls, and so I'm gonna probably make some of them. Let's see. Oh, this was my earlier today. See, I do so many different things in a day. This was my earlier today. I made a video, but after the video, I added more tree-looking things here. And I'm gonna bird. I'm gonna bird. I'm gonna add some bird buttons on this too. That's so pretty. See, this is felting. I did that earlier. And so I'm going to do this still tonight, make some of these molds so they can dry overnight. And um, so, yeah. So let me see what I put in my book. There's my book. About angels. This is about angels among us. Let me see something in here. Miraculous interventions, divine messengers, angelic visitors, answered prayers, angels in disguise, faith in action. Healing touches, love from beyond, angel guides, and angel protection. They're all little short stories about angels. So let me just find a short story here. Pop, are you in here? Pop's not in here. Okay. I left my, oh, maybe my glasses are here in my walker. And in my walker, a pair of glasses. That's my sunglasses. I'm going to take them off of there. Okay. Let's read about the white feather. Okay. Oopsie daisy. A white feather, feather. The guardian angels of life fly so high to be beyond our sight, but they are always looking down upon us. Jean Paul Richer said that. Richter. Okay, I was, it was about 10 o'clock on a Saturday morning. Having changed my baby daughter, Holly, aged eight months, I decided to take a trip to the shops to get something for our lunch. We lived in a small village at the time, and although it was only a 10-minute drive to get to the local shops, the drive was via several narrow lanes. I had lived in a village all of my life, so I knew the road like the back of my hand. I strapped Holly into her car seat and we set off on the short journey, listening to her favorite nursery rhyme CD. We arrived at the local shops, went into the bakery and the post office, and then I strapped Holly back into the car and we set off for home. The lanes in the village were never designed for heavy, good, heavy goods vehicles, and yet truck drivers still insisted on using them as a shortcut to the main road. Over the years, I had signed many petitions that had been drawn up by other villagers, but the council still allowed them to use the narrow roads. So I was always careful navigating the lanes, in particular, in particular one very tight bend that was almost the S shape and just a little wider than one car. If another vehicle were coming the other way, one of them would have to reverse up the lane a few yards and allow the others to pass. As we headed home and approached the S bend, I put my foot gently on the brake just in case a car was coming the other way. As I drove around the bend, there heading straight toward us was a huge red truck. At the speed he was going, there was no way, there was no way he could ever hit his brakes in time to stop, and he was directly headed directly for my car. I really believed that the truck was going to plow straight into us. So in a split second, I hit my brakes, unbuckled my seatbelt, and threw myself over Holly. At least I took the impact. At least if I took the impact, she might survive. They say your life flashes before you, but that's not what happened to me. All that went through my mind was, right, this is my time. My darling dad had a saying when he was alive, 
When the white feather touches you on the head, then it's your time to go. All I remember thinking is, I hope this doesn't hurt too much and pray my baby survives. In those few seconds, I closed my eyes and prepared myself for what was coming, telling Holly how much I loved her. I could hear the truck rumbling loudly toward us as I shielded my little girl. Suddenly, everything went completely silent, so silent that I thought the impact must have happened and I was already dead, being transported to heaven or wherever it is we go next. There was no noise whatsoever. After what seemed like ages, I gingerly opened my eyes. I was still laying across Holly. I was still in my car, and the road was completely quiet. No traffic, no truck coming toward us, nothing. It was as if a huge hand had picked up my car, moved it out of the way, and placed it back down on the road again. I looked in the rearview mirror, and there was no sign of the red truck. It had simply vanished into thin air. Shakily, I drove home. There wasn't another car on the road for the whole journey. When I got Holly out of her car seat, there in her seat was a small white feather. I keep the feather in my car as a reminder that angels were looking after us that day, almost 10 years ago, and I thank him every day for looking after us when I travel anywhere. That was written by Deborah Durbin. That's amazing. A small white feather, and they were fine. Okay, that's a good story. I like that. Okay, I ask God to watch over each and every one of you. Um, thank you. Thank you, um, Cheryl, for uh, putting me in the mode to make another one of these vessels. And um, I'm going to decorate it up still some more. And um, not sure exactly what I'll put on there. But I like it even just like this. And I like that raggedy look. I just really do like the raggedy look. Maybe I'll find some more of these little doilies and put on there. Because I do like the little doilies too. But it's beautiful just as it is if you ask me. Okay, I ask God to watch over you. Every step you take, every move you make, keep you safe and happy and secure and humble and happy and all those wonderful things. All right, God bless and keep you all, and I'll see you on the next video. God bless.